Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Michael Forrester. I work for CoCloud, and I'm one of the principal trainers. Um, I'm here to talk to you today on behalf of Mumshad, who unfortunately couldn't make it, to talk about two concepts that I kind of want to inject into your mindset. One, that AI is actually here today to help with some of the key challenges around learning, particularly when you run a platform like ours, but quite frankly, any internal platform. The second part is that not only is there substance to what's going on with AI today, but that there's a progression into the future that I think most of us are really gonna like. It's not necessarily gonna be comfortable. <laughs> so just to lead with that. So in order to understand the future, let's first talk about the past, right? So 20 years ago, education, we really only had the instructor-led classroom. Now, I'm gonna extend that a little to VILT because most people forget that GoToMeeting has been around for quite some time, right? And so we had lots of pros and cons when it came to using ILT, right? Compared to what we have now. For example, and this is a laundry list, so just relax. You don't need to memorize any of this, right? But, you know, one thing about leaving your workplace, which was a con, Right? To go to a place with experts in it, to get hands-on with equipment that you probably didn't have access to, is that your number one superpower, focus, was, was strong. Right? Now remember also, this is the day before smartphones, so you also weren't easily mobily distracted as well. But we had lots of pros for ILT, we also had lots of cons. Right? These classes were long to set up, they weren't necessarily individuated, they were and are expensive. I regularly work as an Amazon instructor for a partner, and they charge anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000 a student. Does your video on demand platform cost that much? If it does, talk to me. I wanna know, right? Now, by the way, this is before YouTube, 2005, right? This is before Udemy, 2010, right? All right, so this is 2004. Let's go back 10 years. We got video on demand, that's cool, right? This is the now default de facto platform that most of us go for. <laughs> I'm not gonna mention ours per se, but there are problems having taught both in the video on demand space, and I'm gonna extend this into the virtual instructor-led space. We know there's problems. First of all, focus is an issue, right? But you can do it anytime you want to, right? You're not beholden on an instructor, you're not beholden onto a classroom, Right? They're usually scalable, they're low cost, right? There's awesome pieces to this, but you're not gonna get live expert guidance. Now, you probably get a community, hopefully, that will support you and interact with you. And typically, there's, I say, limited lab availability in that. You can't go to the instructor and say, hey, I'd like to try this, is that okay? And you've got an open environment to, to play in. That's not typically the case, especially with cloud providers, right? Most of us, video on demand platforms that provide access to cloud, do so in a limited way, right? Does that sound like a crazy idea to anybody? You can't just log in, for example, to most of the online platforms and start running SageMaker endpoints, right? Unless it's a SageMaker class, then you got it. So we thought to ourselves, how can we get to the both, the best of both worlds, right? Is there a way that we can get to some kind of scalable low cost model that gives you an expert in the room who can get you unblocked when you're working on a lab and you don't understand something. Is there a way to make this work? Is there a way that we can merge these two worlds together? So <laughs> we were asking ourselves, well, why do we want this, right? This is an internal discussion, by the way, at Code Cloud. We were like, why do we want this? Why does this even matter? Why do we need to evolve video on demand? Well, you know why. The skills gap is not getting better. By the way, this is a 2022 report. It's actually worse now, right? It's not getting better. And the funny thing about it is that I think we know why at the CNCF. What do you tell, I think Zara mentioned this, what do you tell someone, not even their first year, let's just say they've graduated with a computer science degree, what do you focus on? Well, we all know the first answer, Kubernetes, because everything revolves around Kubernetes, right? I know that. WebAssembly people are gonna club me later. But <clears throat> the point being is that this is just the graduated and the incubating courses. 
So what do we tell them when we, they see this? What do they do then? Well, typically, right? And you're like, well, you only need to know 10% of this, and they're still crying, right? They're still like, what are you talking about? 10% of this? That's insane, right? What about all these third parties? And the answer typically is, well, whatever the company that hires you is working on or whatever you want to stick on your portfolio. The point being is that it's overwhelming. It's a huge landscape. You can't really know everything. So this is one of the reasons that we were like, can we put an expert in the room? Because you're going to run into a bunch of edge cases here. They're going to become core cases pretty quickly. The other problem we had is that, this sounds strange, but we are provisioning 1,000 Kubernetes clusters an hour. Now, let me be clear about that. They're tiny clusters, right? These are not production-grade clusters with 64 processors and half a terabyte of RAM, right, on the nodes. These are tiny clusters, right? But we are literally provisioning 1,000 clusters an hour, so we had a particular problem where, because what that indicates is that we have a tremendous amount of learners, and because we have a tremendous amount of learners, do you know how many support tickets we get because someone mistyped a command or doesn't understand the concept? because they missed a key part in a slide, so they're blocked, right? And so therefore, we've got a cluster sitting there where the student's just kind of scratching their heads, and next thing you know, they're restarting the cluster because their timer's up. And next thing you know, we're seeing cost goes up. So oddly enough, the learner being blocked was costing us money. So the quicker we can unblock the learner to understand the concept, to execute the command so they can move down through the cluster, the cheaper it is for us, oddly enough, right? You know, just a little bit of a business driver. So what if we could go back to the original part where we could say, you know what? What about a personalized learning experience? What if we could get better globalization, better translation, better localization? What if we could get interactive troubleshooting and unblock students at the lab? And of course, what if I had the expert tutor? What if someone's in the middle of Kubernetes networking and they don't understand IPv6? Of course, they didn't cover IPv6. Can they ask that question and get a little mini course and an explanation? This is this something AI could help with? So I have a question for all of you. How many of you are using AI in your workflows every single day? Raise your hands. Okay. How many of you have had AI explain something to you that you didn't understand, right? <clears throat> so the idea here is that we thought, okay, is there substance to this AI thing? I mean, Google has 25% of their new code being written by AI. Now let me be clear, human engineers have to go in behind it. I don't know how what percentage of that actually makes it into production, but I want to be clear, 25% of the code base is being written by AI, right? Stanford is doing studies on it, Harvard's doing, everybody's doing studies. Like, what can we do to incorporate this into education? Because we want to know if we can go beyond traditional kind of high-profile ML methods and just traditional methods of education. Uh, I just want to caveat this with a warning, though, right? Does anyone disagree that the hype train for AI is ridiculous? I mean, I was going to go to reInvent this year. I am an Amazon authorized instructor. I was like, I'm going to go. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to go. Every track's like AI, right? And I'm not knocking AWS. They're all doing it, right? I was even hesitant to even talk about AI assisted because I thought this track was going to be flooded with AI. I was a little concerned. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's not, right? And <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, is that it's going through its normal cycle, right? Bunch of hype, but also some substance. So we thought, where could we start? For video on demand, typically there's four components, at least in our platform, right? There's the content that you teach, right? The videos, the slides, the lectures, right? There's the assessments, if you're doing assessments, right? Where's the learner at? Do they even need to take this course? How much did they learn after the end of the course, right? Assessments. So we've got content, we've got assessments. We also have gamification. And then, of course, the other part is interactive labs. Because, as you saw from my numbers earlier, we were concerned about the number of support tickets unblocking learners. We wanted to basically optimize that piece. We thought this would be a great starting point. You might, <clears throat> I hope no one's going to ask me, by the way, why we didn't try to figure out how to get AI to generate videos for us. 
or ask me why we didn't get it to do all of our diagrams. Okay, good. Because the other day, I asked for an octopus, and I got six limbs and one limb that wrapped into itself. So it's not just human limbs, right? It's not just human limbs that are a problem. It's also animal limbs, apparently. So then what would be AI's unique contribution if we were going to start with interactive labs and we were going to do something to transform unblocked students? So we've already mentioned about wanting a personalized learning experience. So how could we get, get to intelligent tutoring? How could we get to real-time error detection and feedback in the labs, right? How could we get a system that is watching what the student is doing and can actually comment on what the student is doing? And the other piece was, how can we get better localization? How can we get there, right? And multimodal is a thing that I'm just going to admit to you right now. We kind of got to, but we didn't get to. <laughs> we couldn't quite get there. Generating images is still difficult. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Generating accurate images that actually reflect what you want with AI is still quasi-difficult, right? We didn't quite get there. So let's talk about intelligent tutoring systems. Do a little time check. Let's talk about intelligent tutoring systems, right? So first, we wanted to simulate one-on-one -on -one mentorship. We wanted to make sure that um, we had a kind of real-time guidance, right? Because we want that, in, in, like that expert in the room, right? And then we wanted to make sure that the explanations were contextual. And if we could get to multimodal, that was a bonus, right? We kind of did. Not really. Kind of. Kind of like an OKR. We got 80% there. All right, so this is a lab environment, right, inside of CodeCloud. And what you cannot hear, right, that might be me, actually. Well, let me check for a second, because that could be me. Yeah, that's me. No, it's not me. All right, so what you're not hearing here is that Mumshad, I had to get his face on the screen, you know, at least once. Mumshad's our CEO. He's actually talking to our lab. By the way, this is a live product, right? Like the video is obviously a video, but this is a live product. Mumshad is talking to the lab right now, and he is basically saying, I, I'm a complete beginner, and I want you to create an assessment program. Right? I know it's hard to tell, but all that little sound box down there on the lower left, that's him talking to the lab and the lab talking back to him and saying, oh, okay, I hear what you're saying. He's like, make it more realistic, right? He says, well, why don't we do realistic.com? I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and the AI is going to assess Mumshad's skill level. That's what it's doing. This is a live product today, right? So... <clears throat> Then what we thought about, oops, without me going backwards and forwards, is, okay, we've got a lab that you can ask any question of for the most part. Although the other day I was like, hey, I accidentally asked it. I was like, is there a good burger joint around here? Because a friend of mine informed me that there's like a burger thing going on in Utah. And uh, it said, you know what, you should really talk to Google or Yelp or Google Maps. Like, we're not, I'm not going to answer the questions about locale. Which I was like, oh, good, you have some scoping. That's great. So... <clears throat> We thought, okay, what can we do about error detection and feedback, right? Understanding things like I mistyped the word pod, right? Or, you know, whatever the error is. And can I give immediate actionable feedback about how to fix the problem? And what if it's a complex topic? Because I don't know about you, but I do also a lot of organizational consulting. And when people want to adopt Kubernetes, I tell them specifically, go stateless first. <laughs> then go state full, right? Then maybe go after service mesh, right? But I meet so many organizations that create hugely complex environments right off the bat. And so for a student, we can, we're not gonna throw them into service mesh, but in complex environments for those who are, for example, learning service mesh, how do we meet them where they're at, right? So here's another example, again, without sound. This is Marconi. He is our head of B2B, business to business and marketing for that segment. So what he's actually doing is he's like, hey, the lab is asking me to do a certain thing. Can you help me figure this out? <clears throat> and of course, the video stops. It's supposed to keep going, actually. So what he actually does is he actually mistypes several words up here. And it actually goes and says, 
uh, hey, uh, you mistyped a few words here. Here's two examples that you can literally copy if you want to of how to fix what you just mistyped. And here's why, right? So that AI system is actually watching what's going on in the screen. It knows what's going on with the cluster, right? It's, in, it's, in, it's engaged, right? So this is advanced error feedback. And then last would be language accessibility and breakthroughs. Now, this one, you guys, you're probably going to be like, well, we already have translation software, Michael. We have trained models that already do this. AI is not super necessary, right? But we thought, could we broaden that out? Could we get local? Could we do accents? Could we meet people with different worldviews, right? Now, again, this was kind of a stretch goal for us. We didn't really get there. But what we did get to is that we did figure out how to create some of this with a focus on just, you know, and uh, Mumshot and Vision, oddly enough, you laugh at our CTO, literally spent like a weekend cranking this out using cursor. And by the way, they're both code capable, so don't, don't be fooled by that. And so what they did is they figured out how to use open a, like translate APIs and whisper in order to basically get subtitles and audio for a wide variety of languages. Now for this next video, I'm kind of glad that you can't hear the sound because it's really loud rock and roll music, which could have probably would have woken you up, but not really what we wanted. And here, you're seeing all of the additional languages that we added in to our platform all by using AI models. Now, I can already tell you there's a number of optimizations that we're going to have to go through. For example, I just want to throw one out when you throw AI into the mix, right? Is that um, one, using general purpose large models for everything is a very expensive idea. Don't do that, right? If you decide that you want to do like a system similar to what we're doing, which we are actually espousing that you roll AI into your systems, try to get fine-tuned or trained models specific for the domain, right? For example, you could train something entirely on the Kubernetes documentation, the last two years of highly curated blogs that you consider important, and you can have a four billion parameter model that's gonna perform just fine instead of having an 80 billion beast, right, sitting there trying to answer all the questions, right? So recommendation is, Go specialize, look at a framework like Autogen if you're gonna look at that kind of thing. All right, so let's get hands-on, assuming that I didn't close my browser earlier on accident, which I did. Huh. <clears throat> All right. So where I'm gonna go now for the next few minutes is that I'm gonna go straight to one of our courses. I'm gonna go straight into one of our labs. Let's do pods. While I'm doing that, does anyone have any questions for me while this thing is loading up? Let's see, I'm not showing a PowerPoint presentation, so I haven't put it full screen, but let's see, just curious. Oh, there we go. Just needed a second. Thank you. You know what? You had to come closer. That's what had to happen. <clears throat> okay, so this is a loaded lab. By the way, did anyone have any questions? I didn't even look to see if there were any hands. Yes, sir. Yeah, so like, AI is not fun. It's not the right So do you think like, you can able to capture a lot of things that you do in the school or like, you can train a better You think it can make better? Do I think it can make humans better? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do not. Yeah. Yes, so I think what it can do though is that it can provide information, right? 
Exactly. Yeah, 100%. So the question was, is that, <clears throat> you know, can AI make us better, right? And I, I would infer, like, better engineers, better communicators, right? Better at CNCF landscape. I would say, nah, no. Can it provide information? Yes. Can we provide better interactive environments? Absolutely. Will we eventually get to generated content that is baked for the user? Yes, we will. But no. I think I could have a long discussion about this. I think that AI is going to cost us a few things. For example, how many of you still remember phone numbers? Right? You know the phone numbers I know? The ones I knew before I got a smartphone, right? Those are the ones I still remember, right? Is that a problem? Not necessarily, right? But it has changed us, right? And so AI will do the same thing when it comes to learning. Okay, so let's say I come here and I have not paid attention to the, uh, <laughs> the lesson at all. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I really don't know what to do. Hey, um, I don't really know how to do what the task is asking me. Can you help me figure out pods? Oh. Well, that is my fault, actually. I didn't realize it wasn't going to work. So, hmm, all right. Well, what I would normally do is I would hit the little icon here, and it would basically at, you know, open the mic, right? And what I would say is, you know, how do I find out, assuming I can type, how many pods are on the system? I'm even going to misspell it. Let's just see what happens. That's what I would say verbally, by the way. I, um, I'm not sure why Firefox is now resisting, right? And it says, you know what? This is what you can do. You just do a kubectl get pods, right? Because the question that the thing was asking me was, um, hey, I need you to know how many pods are on the system. That didn't work. Can you check for me? Thinking for a second. That's pretty quick, right? It says, um, yeah, there's a typo in your command, right? So it is watching the command line. And so this time, if I'm like, you know, maybe that's correct. Let's find out. Notice I'm not using any aliases. No default resources. It didn't return anything. And so what's going to happen is actually going to look and say, yep, that's correct, right? So if I go back to the task, it says, you know what? Don't really see any here. It's going to think about it for a second and say, yep, that's it, right? Now I could ask that. I could say, you know, uh, I could ask it in Spanish, you know. Explica los conceptos de pods, right? I can say that. I've done that before, right? And it would basically give me an explanation instantly of what's going on. So this is live and on our platform now. It will support any of the supported languages is like 20 at this point in time, maybe more, right? And especially when the sound component is working, again, pardon my misstep there, um, you can just interact with it verbally all you want, right? And so this is the idea that we were chasing to unblock users, put an expert in the room, right? Now, when I say an expert, I mean like a very domain focused. Yeah. By the way, I love the hallucination statement because it's like, what are the models up to now? Like, is it one out of 20 or three out of 20 hallucinations? I hallucinate more than that, right? <laughs> and I am, like, people ask, someone asked me an AWS question the other day. I am 13 times certified in AWS, and I completely fudge the answer. And I was like, you know what, that's not even right. Let me look that up, actually. So, you know, <clears throat> it's funny how our standards are different for AI. Okay, let me wrap this up, because I don't want to go too far over. I feel like I'm pretty close, actually, already. Okay, so that was just a short demonstration of AI in action. Again, there is a sound component that we couldn't get to. All right, so then what conclusion can we draw from this? One, AI is ready today to help enhance your learning paths, your learning platform. And by the way, this doesn't have to be a commercial platform. This can be your own intranet, right? 
This can be your own internal setup with private company data to train your people. This is not hard to orchestrate. You don't need all the bells and whistles, for example, that CodeCloud might have because we are a video on demand platform. You can set this up yourself independently, right? Now the labs might be a little harder, but you can get there too, right? <clears throat> so the main thrust of this is that AI beyond traditional rule-based programming and even beyond the long lead times for ML is gonna increase personalization and it's gonna increase personalization deeply, right? Multimodal will be the future. I was literally talking to the physician's assistant at my like regular doctor checkup the other day. I was like, how's college going for you, Hema? And she was like, oh, I just take all my lecture notes and dump them into Notebook LM and it gives me a podcast. That's what's gonna happen, right? Other things gonna happen is that real-time feedback and intersection will be the norm. We will want agents that watch the environments. And last but not least, right, the one that I think is going to be the most significant, and this is the future slated one, is that once we figure out the video generation and the diagram, hell, if we just figure out the diagram generation problem, you're going to have content auto-created on demand, right? You're going to say, I don't know anything about, I'm going to pick on Bedrock just because it's AWS is on top of my mind, I don't know anything about Bedrock. Specifically, I don't know anything about guardrails for Bedrock. And you're like, okay, or I don't know anything about Kubernetes networking, because I hear there's two things hard in Kubernetes, security and networking, right? And I want to know more about the networking. Can you strip that out for me? And it will auto-generate a course on demand based on the person's skill level and basically just generate the whole thing for them. And what will happen is this interesting choose your own adventure that once they get to a certain level in the networking, they're going to say, but wait, hold on. I hear that policies are really important. Boom, another class. But wait, I heard that OPA was awesome. Boom, another class. Wait, I hear Reggie is a nightmare. Boom, another class. I'm just kidding, Reggie's not a nightmare. Um, but the deal here is that not only are we gonna get coursework, but you're gonna get learning paths that are auto-generated on the fly for the student. So I hope that I hit my two main things, is that one, I wanted you to leave that AI is ready today to enhance, and two, that the future is gonna be auto-generated probably within the next three to five years or so. Thanks for listening. I'm Michael Forrester. I'm going to clear the stage. So I, know I, I kind of went a little over. If you have any questions for me, I'm actually going to be outside of the tables here to answer questions. If you want to ask technical, you know, whatever, whatever you want to ask. So thank you so much.